please open up your Bibles, if you would, to the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. The seventh commandment is about purity. And the Bible says in Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. What a reward for being pure in heart. So as we begin this morning... We take a look at what this word, love, because it is the core of what this commandment focuses on, just like all the others. Love for God and love for others. And we don't really know what this word means when it's applied to God. In our world, we love a lot of things. We love everything from pizza to people. But love is such a deep, there is such a deep understanding to the word love. And we're going to sort of unpack this box very carefully today because there is so much that God has to tell us. And the Bible tells us about love because the Bible defines what love is. God is love. Everything that comes from God is selfless. That means that God is never focused on himself. You and I, we can't comprehend that. We are so self-focused. We cannot possibly comprehend what it would be like to be unconsumed with self all the time. We're going to that place, and we can, we can totally be excited that one day I won't be burdened with myself, and that gives me great hope. But for now, God is that for us. And he is what the Bible describes that love. So what does that mean? It means that I am the object of his affection. Say it with me. I am the object of his affection. Digest that for a moment. You are the object of your God's affection. He is passionate for you. Does that not excite you this morning? Does that not encourage you this morning? I am the cherished object of divine diligence. He diligently cares for me. He watches over me. He is with me. He is around me. He is underneath me. Read it with me. I am the cherished object of divine diligence. Not human diligence, divine diligence. You and I can be diligent for each other in little bits and pieces. God is, it's, it's unbreaking, always looking out for us. So I am given remarkable and selfless care. God's never too busy with himself that he forgets about what I need. He's always looking out for me. Read it with me. I am given remarkable and selfless care. And I have been redeemed by name My worth is greater than all the treasure of this world. Read this with me. I have been redeemed by name. My worth is greater than all the treasure of this world. Wow. That is love. Now, do you understand why we are so far from what that means? Yes, this is who God is. Passionate for his people. And he has a proposal for us. See, before we can look at marriage between a man and a woman, we need to look at marriage with God. This is the first marriage that we enter into. When we are born again, we enter into this relationship, and a proposal is an offer. This is God's offer to us. He has a proposal of marriage to us to come into his family. And this is a spiritual marriage, and it's a personal invitation to enter into a sacred romance with him. He's passionate for me. He's diligent in how he cares for me. And I am worth more to him than all the treasure on this planet. And he issues an invitation. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Ah, home with
with God. He wants to make a home with us. That is what family is all about. Yes? Relationships, family, home, security, belonging, affirmation, achievement, everything. He meets our basic needs always. He offers us and he fulfills everything that you and I need. And he says, I will be their God and they will be my people. That is pure, faithful love between divinity and humanity. He invites us to share in this. And so when you become born again, you've married a marriage covenant with the creator of the universe. And he treasures you. And he's passionate about you. He is outrageously crazy for you. Wow. And one day, brothers and sisters, he is coming and we are all going to go up with him. And there will be a numberless multitude in the family of God. And he is issuing an invitation. Blessed are those who were invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. A great wedding feast is coming for God's people. Why are they blessed? Because they're a treasured possession. They are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. That is who we are. We are blessed. We are going to this wedding supper. And nothing and no one can separate us from that. Only we can separate ourselves from that. I will be their God and they will be my people, family. Wow. First, we have to get this straight before we can understand any other relationship is having the relationship that we need to have with God. Marriage was meant to reveal the pure and selfless love of the God family. I love that you said this, Christopher, in your message the last couple of weeks. That is what marriage is supposed to reveal in its perfect form, Adam and Eve's relationship would reveal what the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit share to be an example of, play out in their lives. Unfortunately, sin messed that up. So we get to the seventh commandment. Protect your family. Do not commit adultery. And in this purity comes protection. Protecting the family. Marriage is sacred to God. Why? Because from marriage comes family, which is the building block of society. We've looked at this at length when we looked at honor your father and your mother. God created a man and a woman to have a family and to have a lot of children that would honor and love God. And as the children came, they were to honor their parents, and it's supposed to be a cycle of honoring God and honoring Uh, Excuse honoring parents, which meant honoring God, a cycle of honor and respect, which leads to you and I to understand what um, reverence is all about, the highest level of respect that's due to divinity. Hebrews 13, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. And we're looking at adultery. You tend to think, well, I'm not married, so that doesn't, that doesn't count me in. Wrong. We're going to unpack this commandment as we have all the others because God separates over and over again in his word adultery, married people, sexual immorality, everybody. Everyone is included in this. And it is imperative that we understand the purity that God is looking for and the, the contamination that exists in this world and why it has grown to massive proportions. This is why. Satan hates families. He hates families because God is passionate for people. And Satan is doing everything that he can to attack the marriage unit and attack 
the family unit. And he has every kind of pollution out there and every flavor of pollution out there and temptation to lure us away from our God and our marriage covenant with him. Always remember as we go through this that we stand on a marriage covenant to Jesus Christ. First and foremost, those of you that are not yet married, you have a covenant of marriage with your God if you are a born-again Christian. And from that, choose a mate wisely. Not from hormones, not from a checkbook, but from a godly perspective. Because it's a huge, huge commitment and a very serious covenant before the Lord. Many homes no longer provide what is needed in the four basic needs of each person. It's supposed to, when God created us, he created us with basic needs. And I'm going to keep winding these through here because it's so important that we learn these and they become second nature. Because when we understand ourselves, then we can understand others. And when we understand others, then we can be used for the sake of others. Then God can use us more effectively. Affirmation and appreciation. We all have that need. The need to be successful and achieve. We all have that need. The need to belong and the need for security. Four basic needs that you and I were made with. God made us that way with the intent of fulfilling every one of those. And he does. If you are looking. He's also made you and I hands and feet. And a heart and a mouth and a mind. To be able to bless others in the same way. To affirm. To, to help in helping others achieve. To help others belong and to feel secure. That is what the church is all about. That is what the church is all about. That's what we're supposed to be doing every day. Winning souls for Christ by understanding people. Imperative. Brothers and sisters, we, we have to get this in our brains so that we can get rid of our own selves and the focus on ourselves and focus on other people. There's so much dysfunction in this world because of poor marriages, because men and women are choosing mates very poorly. Not from a godly perspective, not marrying someone who is already married to Christ. If you pick someone that's not married to Christ, you are doomed to trouble. You are doomed to divorce. Without Jesus, what hope do we have? Even with Jesus, we have a tons of problems. So what about no Jesus? Doom. Nothing but doom. Because there's nothing to keep a person from hopping from one person to the next without Jesus. Nothing. That's the way of the world. The world has, does not see marriage as sacred at all. This is, we'll start with the biggest trap that is plaguing the world today. I'm not talking about the secular world. I'm talking about Christianity. And I want you to get this today because it is growing in the church. Growing in the church. High-tech porn makes more money than the entire car industry put together. Every vehicle that exists, every kind of vehicle that exists, put all of that together, this outweighs the money that is being made from people watching porn. It's, it's staggering. And what comes from a very heavy burden that people get themselves into, you know, first of all, it's a trap, and the devil never tells you the cost of the trap. He just says, if you get that piece of cheese, like a little mouse coming, they just want that cheese. So all that matters is I have to get cheese. 
never says, but if you do that, it's going to snap your head off. If the mouse could read, probably still wouldn't care because I can get the cheese before my head gets snapped off. That's the way humanity is, about as dumb as a, as a mouse. Because we don't understand that with that comes an enslavement, comes guilt and shame that is very hard to get out of. And sexual sin, more than any other sin, brings humanity into slavery, and Satan knows that. And that is why he has moved people to make this such a big deal. When I was young, you know, 16, 17, 18, 20 even, this didn't exist. If you wanted to, to see porn, you'd have to go buy a magazine or go to some shady little place and, you know, Nobody went to those shady little places that I knew anyway. I'm sure they existed for a reason. But it wasn't easily accessible as it is today. Today, it is everywhere. And the problem is everything that's advertised is advertised with sex. Everything from cat food to light bulbs. No, start paying attention. Christopher sent me this article this morning. I said, I have to put this in here, the, the latest Barna Group survey. This is for men. 63% of 18 to 30-year-olds viewed pornography several times per week. Now, this is a, a few years old, so, you know, the stats are up. 63% of this age group. 77% of 31 to 41-year-olds have looked at porn while at work the past three months. And 35% of all those that were surveyed have had an extramarital affair. The church. Oh, no, not the heathens out there. The church is in trouble. But it's not just about men. Let's look and see what the women are doing. 76% of women aged 18 to 30 admitted to watching porn at least once per month. 21% of women in that same age range view pornography several times per week. And 25% of married women watch porn at least once per month. The enslavement is for both men and women. And it is growing. And it's growing a lot in for women because the industry of romance novels has grown. I don't know if you all pay attention to any of that when you're out and about and you see these things, you know, out on shelves and what have you in book bookstores and pretty much any place that sells magazines. Romance novels ha have an avenue for something that used to be taboo for women. Women wouldn't view porn, but women were happy to read porn. That's what most romance novels are about. It's porn in the romance story. So it makes it a little bit less, pa you know, easier to swallow. And, but it's just a hook to get you to want more, hence where we are today. And you and I have to make a decision to become aware of what is going on around us and be ready to stand firm on these things. Our church went through, the men went through the Conquer Series back in 2017. We can't stop there. We must be willing to help others be free from this. And just because you've been to the Conquer Series, do you think that the devil's not going to bother you again? God, the devil wants to mess up your testimony. He wants to mess up your witness for the Lord. And this is just one of the many ways that he can do that. This generation knows more about sex than they do about how to maintain a relationship for just a few months. Because what can kids learn about relationships when they have a divorced family or even a poor example of a marriage in the home? There's no such thing as a perfect marriage. If anybody says that, they're lying. That doesn't exist because only perfect people could have a perfect marriage. And so you and I are far from that. What you can have is a strong marriage. And I'm going to be talking about how we get there, but first we have to talk about those that aren't married before we get to the ones that are married. First of all, there's, there's porn. There's this thing called sexting now. 
where young people in junior high and high school are taking pictures of themselves and sending them to others. And if you haven't watched the Conquer series, I invite you. Get an education, men and women. Number two, be aware of the danger of a smartphone. Doug Weiss from the Conquer series says that nobody is so important that they should have a porn box in their pocket. That me, he says any phone that's a smartphone, when you can dial up the internet, can be a porn box. And that is why if you have a smartphone, if your kids have a smartphone, you need to lock it down with Covenant Eyes. Covenant Eyes is an accountability software that you can put on your phone that keeps you accountable. Very important. Why pornography is growing and why it's a secret thing in the church is, I mean, you can talk, somebody can talk about, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time with um, alcohol and I'm going to AA. Oh, yeah, good job. But what if somebody comes to church and says, I'm having a porn problem. Ooh. Ooh, you are a weirdo, nasty person. Sin is sin. And the fact is that this addiction is like every other addiction. You need accountability. You need support. Whether you are a gambler, Gamblers Anonymous. Whether you are an alcoholic, Alcoholic Anonymous. Whether you are into drugs, Narcotics Anonymous. We can't do it on our own. You can't battle this on your own. There is a teeny tiny percent of anyone that's been able to battle and get away from pornography on their own. The devil wants you to feel ashamed. And that shame keeps men from reaching out for help. The problem is we're all sin addicts, brothers and sisters. In some way, we all need help. And the church needs to become aware of this and help. And if you think that it's not relevant to you, you are plain stupid. If you think that your kids are so holy they can't get caught, you are plain stupid. Because your kids have a carnal heart just like you do. And they are being affected like everyone else. And what we need to do, brothers and sisters in the church, is to help one another. When you know that someone's struggling, be an encouragement. Don't give them more shame. They're already dealing with that. They're supposed to be able to come into the hospital of Jesus Christ and get help. Let me help you. When you are feeling like you need to deal with this, it's not about sex. It's about medicating. Why do people get drug addicted and alcohol addicted and porn addicted? Because they're stressed out and they cope with their stress in a certain way. But then it also becomes a way to celebrate life. Like if I love to drink when I get down, then I like to drink when I'm happy. If I like to go do gambling when I'm down, then when I'm happy, I'm gonna, um, today's my day. It's, it's the flesh and how it operates. And you and I need to be armed with information that can be useful for helping someone else. Helping someone else. Satan doesn't tell us that when we engage in any of these things, we're going to be in a prison of guilt and shame. That's kept away. And then we are isolated, and then we can't get help, and Satan keeps us suppressed. Oh, we may be going to church. We may be reading our Bible. But inside, we have filthy guilt and shame that we cannot get rid of. God wants to free you. If you are dealing with this, then God wants to give you freedom. Freedom from this and any other type of sin. How can a young man keep his way pure? By, by guarding it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hiding God's word in our heart 
reading our Bible, taking the words that pierce us, the Lord is going to reveal when you read his word, you are entering God's presence. And there is something in here that he wants for you to take for you. And if someday you're not sure what to read, open up the Psalms. Ah, open up the Psalms. Memorize the Psalms. And let the Psalms be powerful tools to fight the devil. Powerful. It's powerful. What does 1 Corinthians tell us about sexual sin? Flee from it. Run from it. Someone around you wants you to see something, watch something, know it would be that answer. Just like Joseph, when Potiphar's wife said, come here, I'm out of here. He didn't stop to have any conversation the way that Eve did with the serpent. I'm out of here. I'm not, I'm not going to engage in, I am not going to um, bring shame upon my God and, and my master. I'm out of here. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a man can commit is outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. And that is why the devil uses this avenue so effectively for us. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price, therefore honor God with your body. Remember, you have a marriage covenant with him. Your body is his for the use of winning others to the kingdom and glorifying his great name. That is our purpose. We were created to glorify the Lord and to reveal him. Flee from anything that is close to that. Young people that are not married, you need to have boundaries around yourself so that you don't think that you're strong enough to get to stay out of sexual immorality. You are wrong. Hormones will always trump the Holy Spirit. If there's no one to keep you accountable, guess what's going to happen? It's going to happen. Don't tempt the devil into giving you a bigger trap than you know what to do with. Let God redeem your story. God wants to redeem your story. If you are caught in sexual immorality, you need help. You need an accountability partner. You need to be able to call someone, find someone you can trust, uh, go through the Conquer Series. If you don't have a Conquer Series group close to where you are, then invest the money and get it and watch it at home. Don't let money be the problem that keeps you from getting clean and having the victory that you need. It's it's not worth that. So let's move into the marriage covenant. God is saying, keep your family free from contamination. That's why he's saying, do not commit adultery. Keep your family free from being contaminated with any kind of sexual sin. So let's look at God's design. He designed a husband and a wife to come together to have a marriage. Don't forget Jesus. Equal partners that complete one another. God made a man and a woman with different attributes that represent him. Made man and woman in our image after our likeness. So both men and women demonstrate different attributes of God. Amazing. Partners are to comp- complete each other. It's a lifetime commitment for companionship. How delightful. And the gift of sex is given at marriage to be unwrapped in marriage. It's a gift that God gives. God created as sexual beings. God is all about and all for sex within marriage. Yes, passionate sex in marriage. Outside of marriage, it is a curse. It is corruption. It is destruction. There is no value in it at all. And if you want to trust your God in that you are going to wait for this till you get married, he is going to bless you beyond what you can imagine if you save it for marriage. And if you have already stepped outside of this, 
your God is still a redeeming God. Make a decision today to not take the bait again. He's a redeeming God. His mercies are new every morning. Adultery is a trap because God hates godly marriages and he brings pollution in many different ways. And it's all out there. Women scantily dressed in pictures and advertisement in magazines, on billboards. It's all around us everywhere. On the TV, you can't escape it. You have to learn how to deal with it. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. See, it's not just about the porn. It's that you can have a porn channel in your brain without ever turning on the computer. Adultery starts in the head, not in the bed. So we're going to talk about these looks for all of you, everybody, men and women. Women like to look too. Don't act like you don't. When something turns your head that is inappropriate, you can't help if something passes in front of you. You're minding your own business. Here comes something that for some whatever reason, whatever it is, now you have a choice to make. Will you look again? It's that second look that will get you every time because a second leads to a third and a fourth. The first look gives you an opportunity to turn away and ask God to empower you to turn away. And power comes from looking away, from saying, oh, no, I'm married to Jesus. I'm not going to profane his name by looking again. Lord, give me the strength. I really want to look again. That was really interesting, but I'm not going to. And so it's every day. For those of you that are out in the world, in the workplace, around a lot of people, I feel sorry for you. Because it's, you're bombarded more than most. For those of you that are around lots of different kinds of people, you have this challenge on an ongoing basis. And Jesus is clear. If you're thinking about it already, would you like to be doing? It's a done deal. Just because you're sitting there thinking no one knows, no one's seen, you're not really doing anything. It's, I can't really hurt anyone. Oh, yes, it can. Yes because the mind gets affected and our characters are affected. There's a lot of this going on today. It's everywhere. And God tells us what to do about it. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right eye hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to depart into hell. Now, don't go getting any knives out. God's not being totally literal. He's being very, very clear that whatever the thing is that's causing you to sin, get rid of it. If you can't handle having a computer in your house, get rid of it. If you can't handle having a smartphone, get rid of it. If covenant eyes isn't enough, And you're finding ways to get around stuff on your stuff because where there's a will, there's a way for both righteousness and for deceit. Then get rid of it. Your your covenant with Christ has to be what is all important. If being around certain people is leading you astray, get rid of that. Don't go there anymore. If people are luring you to things that you know you shouldn't be getting into, move away from it. God is saying, get rid of whatever is affecting you. Get rid of it. You have to make that very tough choice. It's a tough choice. So spouses, how do you guard your behavior? If someone attracts you for whatever reason, flee. The Holy Spirit will bear on you, that this is an inappropriate, even for just a second, get out. Keep your boundaries with members of the opposite sex clear and firm. Husbands and wives, you're out there in the world, you're dealing with stuff, keep your boundaries very firm. We're going to talk about that more in just a minute. Do not give any ground for misunderstandings or mixed signals. And do not fall for flattery. 
Flattery is the thing that leads so many people to go to the wrong place. <laughs> Flattery is excessive and insincere praise given to further one's own interest. Okay, again, I want you to understand the four basic needs, the need for affirmation and validation. He needs validation and affirmation. She says, wow, you have big muscles. Ah, oh, tell me more. Yes, and, and we're off to the races. It goes both ways. You have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Girls, don't fall for the trash. Don't fall for the flattery. Boys, don't do it. Don't give the flattery. <laughs> the need for affirmation is there for you and I. That's why flattery is so successful. We say, when, you, when someone from the opposite sex is telling you something from a sexual point, not saying, wow, I saw how you gave that child so much time. That was so awesome. You know, good job. That really impressed me. When it's about this, the body, it's a no-no. And the problem is that you and I, because we're made to need that affirmation, you know, our antenna can go up and we can be, oh, thank you so much, when it's just trash. It's like they're, they're just smearing poop on you and you're going, oh, that smells so good. <laughs> What is wrong with us? How do you keep your wedding vows? Focus on keeping your vows to Jesus. If your vows to Jesus are front and center, then you will have wisdom and discernment for keeping your wedding vows to your spouse. When the wedding vows to Jesus get shoved aside, guess what? You're fair game for the devil. How to avoid the traps. Number one, communicate. Husbands and wives, you have to make the time to communicate. Life is crazy and busy, and stuff happens all the time. You must carve out time to communicate, to affirm, to tell each other, give each other affirmation so that it doesn't need to be heard somewhere else. Husbands and wives, we need to tell each other, you are wonderful. You have beautiful blue eyes. You are still wonderful after 39 years. Kelly and I celebrated 39 years yesterday. Yes. And he is still the one. Absolutely. But it takes effort every single day investing in our spouse every single day to build up a wall of defense against the world, against the devil, to fortify and to keep Jesus in here, keep the devil out and keep Jesus in. So boundaries are for. Take the time to communicate. Number two, cell phone boundaries. And I don't mean to step on your toes. I mean to stomp on your toes this morning with this. If you have contacts in your phone that your spouse doesn't know, they need to know who all those members of the opposite sex are on your phone, who they are. Your phone should be accessible to your spouse at any time, anywhere. They should be able to get into your phone. You should have no secrets in your phone. And husbands, if you have women on there that your wife doesn't know and she wants those out of there, they're out of there. And furthermore, people from work should not be calling you at home on your cell phones. Sorry. Message me on some other way. Uh, if it's a, a work project, there better be a group for everyone to know and to read the text coming and going. That is how so much trash gets started is through cell phones, inappropriate communications that don't need to be there. And if it's a necessity, then your spouse needs to know all about it. And it goes both ways. Women, too. Contacts for men on your phone needs to be open. A lot of secret trash goes on through texting and it's great that you know, cell phones can be so good but they can also are bringing 
you know, the sex thing that I talked about earlier is going on in, with married people as well. And, and it's, it's breaking down marriages. And the thing is, it's exciting and fun and all this kind of stuff. That's why it's going on. Obviously, it, it would have to be to be going on. And the devil's laughing the whole time because you have no idea that you're going to lose your family over it. And he stands there and he laughs. And, you know, one thing leads to another and you're out. And your whole marriage is ruined and your kids hate you. And all because you thought it was a little bit of sen sensual fun. Social media boundaries. There are many people connecting with people from the past. Their marriages are not happy marriages. They get on here, Facebook, whatever all those things are, and they connect with people from the past, and they start up romances. Because you can only remember back, you know, 20 years ago, oh, it's so awesome and so wonderful. And, you know, this marriage that I have now, it stinks. So I'm going to go back and relive the past. And the thing is, what I told one person not too long ago, the person that wants to engage with you is cheating on their spouse, and they're inviting you to, to cheat with them. And guess what they're going to do? You're going to lose your family, go cheat with them. And guess what? He's going to leave you and spit you out and go on to the next person. What have you gained? But you've lost your family. You've ruined your family. Your children have no respect for you. And you've broken trust. Social media boundaries. Kelly and I have chosen not to have a Facebook page for that reason. We don't want any of that trash in our lives. And if you have it, you need to manage it very carefully because I promise you the devil has a plan of how to destroy your life and he will come at it from every way that you can in ways that you can't even imagine. Other relationships. Men and women are meant to have strong relationships with members of their own sex. Women are meant to have strong relationships with, me, with women we learn from the Conquer Series men that men need strong relationships with men. That is, it is vital. It is vital for both to have strong relationships. So women need to have strong relationships with other women. And, you know, you see that. Women congregate and come to church, and the women go off and sit and talk about whatever women do, and the men go off and sit and talk about whatever men do. Men do. It's just how it's supposed to be. If a woman is wanting to be around men more than she is around women, big red flag. If a man is wanting to hang out with the women instead of with the men, big red flag. That means that there's a need that's not being met and you're wanting to meet it in the wrong place. I'm not talking about you can't have close relationships with church family or with other members of the opposite sex. I'm saying if you're finding yourself attracted that way, I would put myself in check. Be very careful about relationships with members of the opposite sex. Do not get lured away by yourself to go in, even in ministry. Accountability. Do not, oh, you know, I'm going to go talk to so-and-so. Mm-mm. Not if they're a member of the opposite sex. That's why men need relationships with men and women with women. So they can minister to one another. When a pastor ministers to a woman, most pastors are men, when there's a male and female, many lines have been drawn because of lack of accountability. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Know yourself. I'm wanting you to get the basic needs and first is Jesus meeting them and then are they being met in the home? The need for validation. If you're needing validation from members of the opposite sex, you're in trouble. Achievement. The devil wants you to achieve trash. He wants you to achieve secrets and going behind your spouse's back and connecting with people that you shouldn't connect. God wants for you to achieve glorifying him. That's your greatest achievement and everything in between. Belonging, you belong to Jesus. You belong to your spouse. It's an exclusive relationship. You belong to your family. And then security, you will have security if you're doing right and living right within the Lord and within your family and within your church family. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how it's meant to work. Very important that we take these things seriously. Men and women, if you're, this is an awesome book written by Doug Weiss, who is one of the 
leaders in the Conquer series, excellent blessing. 30 days to refreshing your marriage. If you're not married, read it anyway. Know where you're headed and what you need to be straight on as you form a relationship with someone else. It is so important that we learn how to communicate, that we learn how to, what our basic needs are and how those needs are met so that the devil does not lure us away with others. It's happening in the church every single day. And the church is becoming polluted through pornography, through um, illicit relationships, through immorality of every kind. And the church is looking more and more like the world. We have to break those chains by calling on the name of Jesus and doing the hard work, first of all, of seeking help, of being willing to call it what it is. Men in this house of prayer, I can't wait till you're involved in helping other men come out of bondage. And you know what that's going to take? Your testimony, whatever that may be. It is a real life testimony. My experience, I was in bondage. Jesus got me out of bondage. Wow, there's power in that. When you see the Conquer series and you see these pastors that were enslaved through pornography and sexual sin and they have been set free, they are screaming it from the rooftop, not keeping it a secret because, you know, what am I going to look like? Who cares? What does Jesus look like through me? That's what's important. I want to tell I was a slave and I am free and this is how it happened and I want you to have the same freedom that I have. That is what the church is about. We have to be willing. Brothers and sisters, this sacred thing called marriage that God has given us, he wants to give us power to keep it fresh, to keep it going, to keep it holy, to keep it pure. And those that are willing to live according to God's standard instead of the world's standard are going to find Abundant living like no other. It is what God gives. In closing, I don't know where you are in your relationships, whether you're single and have a porn channel going on in your head or have a problem with taking multiple looks all the way to full-blown watching porn. If you are in any of the spectrum, any of that spectrum, the awesome and wonderful thing about the God who loves you, who is crazy about you, who has his sights set on you, is that he says, come, let's talk about these issues that you're having. I see what you're doing. You can't hide it from me. I want to free you. Come, let's talk about this because your sins may be as scarlet, but I want to wash you white as snow. I want you to be pure. I can give you that. You can't produce that for yourself, but I can give it to you. Come. Jesus says, come. All who are thirsty, all who are in need, all who are in need of holiness, come. Draw near to me. I will draw near to you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is righteous. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess Turn, get help, be free, help others get free. May the Lord help you in every way to live a pure life.